time for another pronunciation video. For those people who didn't see the first one, please look at it first because it covers some of the important basics. Also, a lot of people find it quite hilarious. So welcome to Let's Speak German with ML3. In my accidental live stream, someone asked about another German pronunciation video. And I thought, well, Steel Division is out. So probably everybody wants to know how to pronounce all those names in that game anyway. And in this video, we'll look at the units of the Panzerlehr Division. And let's start. Here we have the Aufklärer mit the Kübel MG. It should be Kübelwagen, which basically means bucket vehicle. Wagen for vehicle or car. So you can say bucket car or Kübelwagen in German. And Aufklärer is a recon unit. Next is the Spätrupp with the Sonderkraftfahrzeug 250-1. Schrägstrich means slash, basically. And it literally means diagonal line. Schräg means diagonal and Strich means line. So Spähen is the German word for to scout. So this is basically a scout team. Trupp is usually a team of two men. So the next is the SPW 234-1. Now here's a little problem actually, because SPW usually means Schützenpanzerwagen, which is armored personal carrier, but this isn't an APC. But here it gets a bit complicated, because it could also mean Spähpanzerwagen, which means recon armored car. But it could also mean schwerer Panzerspähwagen, which would be heavy armored recon car. So as you can see, it's a bit complicated here, but I think we can exclude the later one, because the heavy versions had six or eight wheels and there's an SPW in the game with just four wheels which would be a leichter Panzerspähwagen, a light armored recon car. So I think it actually means Spähpanzerwagen, which basically is the same like Panzerspähwagen. You just flip the position of two of the words. So the same is with the, with the Puma, which basically, I mean, basically everyone calls him Puma. Because um, Sonderkraftfahrzeug 234-2 or Sonderkraftfahrzeug 234-2 is actually quite complicated. And well, here for these versions, there's not much else to add, I would say. Then let's look to the infantry. Here we have the Panzergrenadierführer, which basically means armored infantry leader. Nothing new here. Then here we have the Panzergrenadier with Sonderkraftfahrzeug 251-1. Same here. Then here we have the Schweres Maschinengewehr 42. Now this is important because a lot of people pointed out. The Germans had a light and a heavy machine gun. At least they call it this way. Das leichte Maschinengewehr und das schwere Maschinengewehr. But the machine gun actually and the caliber was pretty much the same. The only difference was this part here. If it had a tripod, the Germans referred to it as a Schweres Maschinengewehr. If it had a bipod, it was a leichtes Maschinengewehr. So basically the Germans declared them after their use and not after the caliber in this case. There are also some notions that some people say that the Panther was not a medium tank because it was too heavy, but the Germans I think referred to it as a medium tank because they were looking at its function and not at its weight. Here we have a Pioneer, which is basically an engineer. And then we have a Sturm Pioneer, which Storm Engineer or Combat Engineer. These guys you probably know from the German Stalingrad movie from the 90s. The guys in the movie, those were Sturm Pioneer. These were specially trained units, actually in game as far as I know, but I'm bad in the game. They are not as good because, well, they're good in close combat, but it rarely happens. And there's also the Pioneer Führer, which means basically Pioneer or Engineer Leader. So next up, the tanks. Now here we have the Befehlspanzer 4, which is the command version of the Panzer 4. Then here we have the regular Panzer 4, and then here we have the Befehlspanzer Tiger, which is the command version of the Tiger. Then there's the regular Tiger, then we have the Panther D, not much to add here, I think. Then we have also a command version, the Befehlspanzer. Then we have the Königstiger, which correctly translated should be Bengal Tiger, so, but I usually also say King Tiger because, well, it's more about 
the the idea and not the correct animal let's face it but if you really want to be correct well then translate the animal type but i think it's about it's just another level above the tiger and the h means probably that it has the handle turret and also the panther r or panther a so then let's move to the support units here we have the sonderkraftfahrzeug 2508 then the opel blitz munitionstransporter i mean i assume it's munitionstransport it's just more for munition and it's basically ammunition carrier and opel is the company and blitz means lightning then here we have another sonderkraftfahrzeug i think we got enough of those then here we have another panzer spewagen with this is a radio antenna Then we have the Grille, which I think is translated in Cricket. Grille, in Cricket, yeah. So I don't know why you call it Cricket, but does it look like a Cricket? Uh, after a few beers, probably. And then we have the Flammpanzer 52-16. So the next one, we have the Pack 38 50mm. 38 is for the introduction year and PAK means Panzerabwehrkanone, which basically means anti-tank gun. Then we have the Panzer Shrek, which is often translated into tank terror or tank scares. And also another Sonderkraftfahrzeug. Then we have the PAK 40 with the 75mm gun. And then we have the Jagdpanzer 4, which basically is the Tank Hunter 4 or the Hunting Tank 4 which sounds a bit more weird. Then for anti-air we have the FLAC 38 20mm. Again, introduction year basically and 20mm caliber. Then we have the Gepard, which seems to be on a Panzer 38 chassis and also with a 20mm. Ironically enough, I think the current Bundeswehr FLAC Panzer also is called Gepard. So then we have the FLAC 36 or the FLAC 36, and of course the 88mm or the 8.8, as the Germans say. They didn't say, usually say, usually in German you say 37 or 88. In this case, as far as I know, they said 8.8. It's quite an oddity, because in this case the Germans went with, not with 88, with 88, but with 8.8. Then here we have another Sonderkraftfahrzeug and another 88. Then for artillery, We have the, yeah, here the important, the Panzerwerfer, because you know it werfs Panzers. It just means um, Panzer, you know, it means tank, and Werfer means thrower. So it basically tells you it throws tanks. I mean, this is what the name implies in a way, but it doesn't. Then here we have the Vespe, which is another artillery piece, and it's called, and this means Wasp, basically. So I don't know why they call it Cricket and Wasp, but I, th I think actually at a certain point that those names were forbidden. I think the... I'm not entirely sure, but I think there was once an order that certain names were forbidden for the artillery. Then here we have the Beobachtungspanzer 4, which means Observation Tank 4. And then here of course we have the famous Nebelwerfer, the Fog Thrower 41, and another Artillery, self-propelled artillery, the Hummel, which means bumblebee. So, if you know the flight of the bumblebee, yeah, that's it. No, not really. Then, for the Air Force, we have the Storch, which is actually from Fiesela, as far as I know. Fiesela, I think they also built the V1. And, and the funny thing is, Fiesela is, a, is the name of the company, but a word for mean in German is Fiesa. And this is a joke of mine, I usually call it Fieserstork, the mean stork. Here you can see it. Then we have the BF-109, here it is called Emmy 109 which is not really correct, because for the 109 it was still BF. But yeah, I think the Americans usually call it an Emmy 109 so, so, and we're playing an English version as you can see, so, you know, don't trust the intelligence you see here. Then we have the Focke Wolf 190 or Focke Wolf 190. Then, yeah, the A8 and the G1. Not much to see here. So, if you liked it, please let me know. And I might cover some more divisions. If you want to know more about Steel Division, 
Take a look at my video where I use military history and military theory and look how they are applied in Steel Division. Or maybe my video where I cover how effective the German Panzerfaust was. Thank you for watching and see you next time.